Uh, kia ora, my name is Tu Dooley, I'm from um, a little place called Whakatane in Bear Plenty of New Zealand. Um, I've been practicing the, the art form of moko for about 25 years. Apakawa, my name is Efiri Fini, I'm from Bali in Singapore. And um, I've been doing art since I was a little girl, but um, professionally about three or four years now. I guess for me, my love of art comes from being surrounded by it as a, as a child. My father was a custom airbrush artist. Um, so I was exposed to fantasy art at a young age. Um, so I grew up doing fantasy art, you know, muscle men and <laughs> beautiful women and <laughs> that type of thing in Amazonian scenes. Um, when I got to high school, I was introduced to Māori art and I started um, bone carving. Um, I just always knew I was going to be an artist from a little age. I just loved it, enjoyed it since I was a little boy. Uh, for me, really different. Um, so my parents are, are, are entrepreneurs and I was always trained to to you know run the business and stuff like that and um, at, at uni as well it was a completely different um, degree that I took and, but I've always had a love of art since I was a little girl as I mentioned before and my mom as a hobbyist would draw and I'll do art but it was never encouraged, it was never um, you know, really talked about but until, until I don't know, about 15 years ago, it's when it, when the spark in me was like, no, I need to do this again. I need to be able to um, express myself. And and then through meeting too, that's when things really kicked off for me. Because uh, obviously being with him, he was just drawing till four or five o'clock in the morning, you know, and it just, yeah, the natural effect just rolled on. And so yeah, that's how it, that's how it um, manifested. I'm really into sacred geometry. And sacred geometry is, is is the architecture of the universe. It's a, it's a visual. It's basically a vis visual representation of the energy that's around us. So that's when my art form changed from beautiful woman <laughs> to um, sacred geometry. And for me, it's a meditative form of art, really. Um, so I met JJ probably about hmm, must have been probably it was about five years ago, I'd say. And I um, was really impressed by her work with the recycling plastic into mats. Man, I hate, you know, coming home and seeing rubbish and knowing all this plastic and stuff's going into landfill. So I was really, um, really impressed by the, um, by the work that she was doing. So it was just a natural uh, connection for us to, to, to connect and um, I, I've enjoyed doing the designs for JJ. So I've designed Mangopare mat, uh, Feku mat, um, Kōrero mat, uh, Kiwi. Yeah. I think that's it. I think so. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> For me, the mat that I designed was um, ancestral connectedness. Um, it was an interesting project because um, it was when JJ introduced the round mats, and I got really excited because obviously my work on mandalas and sacred geometry, so the whole concentric circle thing really got to me. the The basis of the of the design was to do with the connection, the connection of this land and also the connection of um, sacred art. Um, obviously this land has got so much history and so much ancestral knowledge behind it, you know, in, in regards to in their creation stories and the stars and the universe. And, and I saw that relation to sacred geometry. And I thought, because, you know, mandalas represents wholeness and harmony and unity. And this land has provided a lot of that for me, so that's where the, the basis of um, the art came, came from. You know, you get people from across, all over New Zealand going, oh, that's Tu's mat, so they recognise his work, and it's it's more of a form of uh, connection that, um, and it's it's definitely helped in terms of, oh, who designed that, and then, you know, gets referred on to, to our page and stuff like that, but um, it's really amazing to see, to see the designs kind of at, really important places as well you know like we've seen it at funeral homes with yeah. um, play centers and you know would randomly walk into something like oh that's all that or you know like <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah it's cool it's cool um, having that sort of connection yeah. Yeah. Um, another positive for me was actually um, uh, introducing it to one of my apprentices who has um, original blood so he started he's designed a few Mets for JJ as well, so that was that was really cool for me to be able to do that. Um, hook, hook a up.
<laughs> Book a brother up. Book a brother up. <laughs> the planet definitely needs to think about our plastic use and um, the the designing for a co-papa like that with the with the mats is so easy because I'm passionate about it anyway. You know, and the fact that um, the mats are going to like childcare centres and you know places where kids are around, and I mean. That's a, that's a big plus for us. I mean, we, we believe and hope that our art form is a, is a visual connector to to the consciousness that we're all part of, you know? So so the fact that we, the intention of the art gets spiritually, spiritually in the ear, you know? <laughs> Let's go airy-fairy now. So seeds. <laughs> yeah, so seeds for the kids, you know, because it, it creates conversation, it creates discussion and and hopefully their minds, you know, wonder where the designs come from and why it's designed. The most rewarding part of it was just the, like, like if you were saying, it was just the fact that you're turning somebody else's rubbish into art. <laughs>